Earth's magnetic field reversal is coming, but scientists were wide of the mark. This is very significant space weather information we should all be aware of because we're going to be living it. We're already seeing the effects of solar minimum in the extreme weather that we've had. It's the extreme winter, prolonged winter during the spring that's affected the agricultural industry, livestock of the United States and worldwide. And the extreme heat that we've had also, these heat domes over parts of Europe They've broken all records of heat, and uh, they're still ongoing. Now, this has to do with solar minimum. This has to do with increase in solar flares, cosmic energy, cosmic rays coming in. And we also have a weakening of our Earth's magnetic field. Space weather tells us, for example, today, we'll look at that later on, but... Uh, we have a bright Jupiter-Moon conjunction today, for example. But going to the bottom of that, uh, Dr. Terry Liu created a diagram showing the location of the natural particle accelerator and how it sprays radiation into space. Okay, That's something we're going to look into later on. We've had 31 fireballs today. But we have a an increase in radiation because of the fact that we have a decrease in the Earth's magnetic field. That's also due to the solar minimum, but also the radiation levels are increasing because uh, why are the cosmic rays intensifying? Main reason solar is the sun. Solar storm clouds such as coronal mass ejections sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass the Earth during solar maximum. CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay, but now solar cycle is swimming towards solar minimum and this allows the cosmic rays to return. Another reason could be the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, which helps protect us from deep space radiation. But we'll look at that later on. And also we'll look at what effect that has on the biosphere as well. Sean Martin reports on Express UK. Earth's magnetic field could be preparing to flip. And as we saw earlier today in one of the videos I uploaded, it could even be as short as a lifetime that it would take the Earth to flip its magnetic poles. The last time it did happen, it took about 22,000 years, so that was a long time. But in previous uh, examples, researchers have found from the time that uh, they said what they, they, a very easy way for them to do to find out how it happens is by examining the formation of rocks, for example, through lava, the basalt rocks. At the time they are uh, uh, flung out of Earth uh, during an eruption, their magnetic uh, position is locked in the rocks. That's how they know where the Earth's magnetic poles were at the time of the uh, creation of those rocks, the lava. And that's how they know how long a period at the, uh, it took for the, how long a time it took for the Earth reversal to take place, the magnetic field reversal to take place. It could be a lifetime, and the last one, though, was 22,000 years. Now, in recent years, scientists have been getting gearing up for a potential flip in the magnetic field, natural phenomenon which occurs every 200,000, 300,000 years when the north and south poles switch. This has happened many times in the past. The poles attempted to swap 40,000 years ago, but the process failed, they say here. As a result, the last time the poles switched place was 780,000 years ago, meaning we are long overdue a flip in the magnetic field. Previous research had found that once the process of the pole reversal begins, it could take up to a thousand years to complete, or it could take as much as a simple lifetime. But a new study from the University of Wisconsin-Madison analyzed lava flow sequences, ocean sediments dumped, and Antarctic ice cores as well, which were present prior to, during, and post the last magnetic field reversal, 
and that they revealed that the switch could take up to 22,000 years to complete, putting previous estimates way off the mark. This is what we said before. But that same study said that previous estimates could be as long as just a simple lifetime. The last switch took 22,000 years. Now, Earth's magnetic field is created by the liquid iron outer core spinning around the solid inner core. And this dynamic action creates an invisible field which goes through the north and south of the poles of our planet, encircling it, and that's where Earth gets its north and south magnetic poles from. As new rocks form, usually through the lava flows, as we said before, or ocean sediments being dumped, they record the magnetic field at the time they're created, which is what the team of geologists used to date the last magnetic field reversal. Geologist Brad Singer said lava flows are ideal rec recorders of the magnetic field. They have a lot of iron-bearing minerals, and when they cool, they lock in the direction of the field. But it's a spotty record. No volcanoes are erupting continuously, so we're relying on careful field work to identify the right records. Reversals, he said, are generated in the deepest parts of the Earth's interior, but the effects manifest themselves all the way through the Earth and especially at the Earth's surface and in the atmosphere. Unless you have a complete, accurate, and high-resolution record of what a field reversal really is like at the surface of the Earth, it's difficult to even discuss what the mechanics of generating a reversal are. So they still don't know how a reversal is taking place, what causes it. Other scientists have previously warned the pole reversals could leave Earth's magnetic field will be compromised during switching process, leaving living beings on the planet vulnerable to an increased dosage of radiation from the sun. Not only from the sun, but also cosmic rays. That's something we're going to look into later, how uh, that uh, increase in uh, solar radiation and cosmic radiation caused mutations and caused uh, extinctions. We'll see that later from research evidence. That's, that's something we should be aware of. Now, Monica Corte, head of the GFZ Potsdam Working Group on Geomagnetic Field Evolution, which is in Germany, uh, told the website Space, quote, regarding increased radiation, that would go along with decreased shielding, but it seems that the atmosphere would still provide sufficient shielding at Earth's surface that humans and animals would not be significantly affected. But all the effects we currently only see during strong solar geomagnetic storms would likely increase and occur during moderate solar activity. This includes satellite outages or damages to satellites, increased radiation doses on long-distance aircraft and the International Space Station, and distortions of telecommunications and GPS signals. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.